Good morning, everybody, and afternoon, evening, night. Um, welcome to the 50 Questions webinar. Uh, this is number eight on May 29th of 2020. Um, so we are ready to get going here. Hey, good morning, C9. <laughs> I got your name finally right. Oh, my goodness. Good to see you. So I have some uh, questions here from, from the internet that I was going to fish up just to uh, go through these first to make sure that we get them. So hope you guys are all doing well. There's some pretty amazing shifts going on in the world right now. Um, you know, it's still a little chaotic, but I tell you, by the end of this coming month, I think we're going to see some pretty phenomenal things taking place in in the multiverse. Um, let's see. So part of me here, while I'm going through questions because some of these uh, I'll actually just answer privately here because they're more more personal uh, geared questions. Let's see. Lately, dragons have suddenly become very front and center in my consciousness. I'm not sure. Oh, this is from Marla. And actually, before we start asking questions and while we're all here, how about we do the heart space meditation and drop into the heart? And hello, Ethan, Randy, Samson, Malit. Christine, man, I really appreciate you guys supporting and coming on here every every time. So, all right, let's do the heart meditation, the, the sacred space of the heart. So simply visualizing your physical heart and your light within the heart. And you can make this your own way. You can either send your light down in and connect to the heart of the earth, or you can breathe that light from the heart of the earth up into your heart however you feel to do this so this is just my way of doing it please do make it your own so i like to just visualize the light from within my heart and i like to visualize it dropping down connecting into that crystal sun of the earth and then breathing that energy back up and then connecting bringing in source soul Creator God, creation energy, breathing that into the heart. And as you're mixing both those together with you, we're sending those straight back out, all three of us. Earth, sky, and you goes in both directions. So then you are a calm of light, grounded, connected and in the heart awesome thank you guys so yeah be sure to write your, write your questions over here on the questions tab and we'll get started here with uh, some of the internet questions so marla asks lately dragons have suddenly become very front and center in my consciousness but info on the net is often misleading and based on myths i plan to purchase a dragon wand and would like to ask you about dragons as you see them and do they really look like flying dinosaurs with bat wings? So I tell you, there are so many different species of dragons. They come from all over. I mean, there's there's the earth grid dragons, the ones who, who create the, the ley lines, the different geomagnetic lines on the planet. There's water dragons, um, you know, kind of like how the Chinese dragons look. Um, those ones is how the water dragon styles present to me. Um, but there are just a lot of different dragons out in the world. Um, and they're, they're all benevolent beings. Um, you know, they, they, they have that higher connection. Um, but, uh, you know, through the years, it always depicted like on the, the old churches, how Archangel Michael was the slayer of dragons and how, you know, the dragons appeared to be bad. Well, I know Michael never slayed dragons, um, but I also know that a lot of those dragons at the time were harnessed against their free will and, um, you know, and used to create the different grid systems throughout the planet. So 
some say we have an abnormal amount of dragons on this planet because they were basically brought in from all over to be utilized here for those grid systems. And as we were clearing those different grids throughout the years, um, you know, all the different grids from government, religious organizations and other organizations, um, they, those dragons were held again in a way that they were creating these non-beneficial grids. So I've also met a lot of people who you can see they have a dragon walking with them and that is usually a sole aspect um, of them that one of their incarnations is of a dragon. So yeah, working with the dragons, they're, they're pretty phenomenal beings um, and, and they keep presenting a lot these days too. So. Um, just start working with them. And the dragon wands are really a great way for somebody to start working with the dragons because it is holding such a safe space for you to connect to those that are there for your highest and best good. So yes, dragon wands, for sure, a phenomenal way to get started. Um, let's see, check some more questions here. All right, so that's about all the questions through internet that we have um, that we'll share on the air. Like I say, the rest are for more personal questions. All right, so we'll get started here on the questions tab. All right, Sinan is asking, if we put a tensor ring on any metal pyramid, will the pyramid focus the ring's column of light more intensely? Um, so you know we've been using the rings on the pyramid on the giza style copper pyramids ever since we started making rings and it does it, it amplifies so to me it is amplifying that focal point of energy as it goes up and out but if you're using also that ring sitting it just on top of the pyramid it is holding a higher space within the pyramid and then if you have the ring down underneath the pyramid as well um it it will amplify everything within the pyramid including that focal point so like these little guys that are getting released on june 1st i for the first time just put the harmonic creation field trio on top of this guy and holy smokes does that amp things up um so yeah the, the tensor rings and pyramids do wonderful things together um, the energetics amplify and harmonize each other uh, Linda asks, what is the best ring to put around tinctures and supplements? So really the, the best ring for, for any kind of oil-based or water-based tinctures, supplements, I really recommend the Harmonic Creation Field Trio. Um, but if you want to go with, with a single ring, the Golden Fire is is usually the way to go. Um, and I say usually because the Regeneration Ring just connects the the herb the plant the crystal the consciousness of them it connects them more into their physical aspect and i know with tinctures and such you are working with more of that higher aspect of the physical aspect of that crystal mineral plant because um, you're working with more of the essence of it so you know it depends on what it is that you're working with right now and how high of a connection it already has um and i would and for you i guess i am leaning towards the regeneration ring as being one that would be more beneficial for the ones that you are personally working with um, because the regeneration rings and you know we have that small uh, regeneration water ring in the trio nice light gauge um phenomenal ring and inexpensive so this is the one that i would suggest is that three inch regeneration ring now you can get the heavier gauge regeneration ring yeah and again i don't have one here but the heavier gauge um you know like the gals that dances dancing with water say, say that you know the the liquids the water the oils and also the consciousness of the plants and such don't require such a heavy gauge ring um, just these lighter gauges is absolutely perfect. 
Sinan uh, asks, if we can change and upgrade a new etheric template of any tensor ring used in our consciousness, is it necessarily to, ca to calculate the length during wiring? So this is a question on etheric templates um, and tensor rings. So basically, you have to have a working qubit measure that creates a tensor field first and foremost. So once you have a working tensor field, then it is the etheric templates that we do the work with. So within this field of the tensor ring, this particular ring, because we made it, is connected to our etheric templates, the higher dimensional aspects of these tools. So within this field, you find everything that we've created here in the etheric comes out and is found within this field. So first and foremost, I have to have a working tensor field. Um, so, so yeah, they're both very important, both the length of your wire and the etheric templates. Um, and another question, if I am near a base station and wearing my wings of talk, do I have to anchor a column of light on the base station with using my consciousness, or can wings of talk do this automatically or just changing the frequencies reaching us? So basically, if you are wearing oh, any of the tools, they are going to change, yes, those frequencies that are reaching you. But this is not going to go out and anchor the columns of light automatically. Um, we have to take a part in doing that work. But the more we do this kind of work, anchoring columns of light or using the wings of talk to create that space with the column of light, the more we do that, the easier it becomes. And eventually that aspect of us can begin to do that work automatically. Just like so many people now are doing healing work for others without even consciously being aware of it. it happens with my sister all the time. And that's been happening with me recently too, is that there are, there's energy work that I do that I am not consciously aware of doing, but yet the issue comes up in my is the human conscious awareness but then there's that other part of me that comes in and does it but for now you still need to go through and anchor those columns of light and do the work until it becomes ingrained in who you are and what you do um, another example of that is um, praying over your food sending energy into your food gratitude back to where the food came from all the way to its source and everything and everybody in between until it gets to you. Now that's something that I used to do all the time. And then after I was doing that all the time and I started wearing one of the harmony coils when we first made the harmony coil, the harmony coil was actually helping to put that which I consciously do all the time into my field. And then with my Merkaba field functioning, that is part of what my Merkaba field does as well, is, is that as food comes into my field, into my awareness, it is automatically going through sending that love, light, gratitude to the food all the way back to its source. Um, so these are just things that we can do on more of an autopilot, if you will, after we, you know, it becomes ingrained in who and what we are. Uh, Bill asks, good morning. If one has the golden fire activation and projects heart energy through the hands into water, will tensor rings improve the water? So if you have the sacred heart activation where you are running that golden fire energy and you run that energy from the sacred heart, the golden fire, and you run it out your arm from your through your arm and out your hands, you know, it's, it's kind of like high level Reiki, um, when you run that into your water, your food, anything of that nature, that is going to do basically what the tensor rings are doing. You can still add other levels and layers by using the tensor rings as well. So using them in conjunction or using the rings on your hand, it is going to bring through more levels and layers. And again, if I'm not answering the questions uh, clearly and concisely, please do ask them again, Bill. So I hope that answers. 
Um, Bianca asks, when will the silver products be back in stock? Is there a difference in the metals between silver and copper when used to make the pendants? So we always have the silver, all the silver that we have is always in stock except for this one. The, the Taurus pendant is one that um, they're tough to make. And so we only make about, you know, a few of these a week. And um, recently we just had a huge run on them. They're all going to China for our distributor there. So we are working on, uh, we just got more wire. We're working on making another run of the Taurus pendants, which should be available next week. So just about every week, you'll see that the Taurus pendants go back in stock. Um, we just, we, we limit the quantity on them that we have on the website just because we don't want to get too far behind on making those where we only make a few a week. Um, and is there a difference between the metals of using the silver and the copper? For most, for, for all the golden fire tools, all the golden fire pendants that we create, um, you know, from the fairy wands to the coils, um, any of the copper tools that we create in golden fire are the exact same in silver. That's why we don't make a lot of the golden fire tools in the silver. But the regeneration rings, now that is where the silver and the regeneration ring are very much in a higher, cleaner, vibratory state than the regeneration rings made out of the copper. Now, I'm not downgrading the, the copper regeneration rings like you find in the gateway pendant, um, this middle ring right here. That's not, um, that's still a phenomenal ring the regeneration in copper, but when you put it into silver, it is a lot cleaner, clearer, crisper, higher, amazing. Um, Sinan asks, does your tools have a moon related feature as well as crystals at full moon? No, um, actually the, the, the moon and all the cosmic does not have an effect on the tensor rings and tensor fields. Um, the tensor rings and tensor fields are very much in a space beyond all, all those different influences. Um, you know, the tensor rings are actually in, and the tensor fields are in a space, um, you know, beyond being influenced. Um, so no, there, there is no connection with the moon with those fields. Uh, Linda asks, if you take a picture of the wings of talk in it, will it hold the column of light? Yes. All the, all the pictures that are on the website, we see all those photographs as being connected to the authority templates. And that's something that we've always done in the beginning is that anytime we have any, um, photographs of the tools, we connect in the etheric version into that photograph. Um, I actually have a, there's a local gal who's, um, gosh, she studied feng shui all over the world, um, just a master in feng shui. And she actually uses our catalogs that we used to print. We haven't printed one here in a year or so, but she always used our catalogs in her grids for feng shui because it brought the energetics through. Um, so yeah, you can totally use a picture to um, bring in the energetics of the wings of talk. Let's see. And would you describe and talk about the crystal sun and the earth? <clears throat> Pardon me. So the crystal sun within the earth, that is something that, um, we first discovered this when we made a giant Harmony Gaia sphere for one of the Ascension Chambers when the Harmony Ring first came out. So this giant Gaia sphere that we made to go in the base of one of the Ascension Chambers to be to, with the intention of being the grounding aspect of that. When we made that, that is where we were first introduced to the crystal sun within the earth. And we thought that was, you know, at the time that just seemed like a, a really wild concept. 
And then it was core synchronicities. I heard some other channels talking about right after that, the crystal sun within the earth. And so we were like, okay, well, I guess other people are seeing this as well. So what we see that crystal sun within the earth is simply the, the heart of Gaia, the, 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 that conscious, the consciousness of Gaia, that divine spark is what we see as the crystal sun. And I know that whenever I connect down into that crystal sun, that divine spark of, of consciousness of Gaia, it gives me chills and I get chills right now. Just, just doing it, just putting my attention there. Um, it is really a powerful thing and a powerful way to ground and to release and to heal. Because again, um, she is here to be in service to us as much as we are to be in service to her. Um, very symbiotic relationship. But don't get stressed out about what you see going on on the planet. She is very forgiving, and this is just part of our journey. Um, she's never in trouble. Gaia is never in trouble. Sinan, would you consider med consider meditating by plating your placing your camera inside your big ascension chamber or ascension pyramid at the webinar. Aha. Uh -huh. And you know, yeah, I've actually, we've done a few meditations where we put the camera inside of, of the chamber and, um, yeah, seen, and I would certainly consider that. I don't, I won't be able to make that happen today because my cord isn't long enough to make it there, but, um, yeah, we'll certainly consider doing that of, of bringing the camera inside of one of the pyramids or the ascension chamber. So that way everybody can have a feel and a look from within there. Um, it sometimes it's easier just to be able to project yourself into those spaces when you can visually see it like that. So that's a fantastic idea. Uh, Bianca asks, some of the pendants I own, I keep in my bedroom and in my space. I'm assuming if I'm not wearing them on my body, is it safe to say that they're still emitting their frequencies and energy in my space? Um, thank you, Bianca. And so, you know, wearing your, wearing your pendants is obviously the most powerful way to do it, but you know, having them in your space, they, the rings only create columns of light. So where these guys, let's say, let's take this one, for example, this is creating more of a column of energy. So when you hang this up in your space, basically it is just shooting that column out wherever it's at. Now, one fun thing to do is to get like a disco ball spinner or one of those little wind spinners. They're coming battery powered or the plug in that just sit there with a slow revolution. And you can actually use that to hang all of your tools on. And then they are spinning and they are sending that field throughout the entire home all the time. Now there are other instances like the, the coils. So if you're wearing, if you have a coil pendant in your space, the coil pendants do have a little bit larger field, but it's only about, you know, six feet across. And so that field of the coil pendant is not that large. Um, for something to radiate out into your full environment, again, where they only create that column, you can totally spin them. Um, but otherwise, the only thing that will radiate out into the environment then would be the, the spherical forms. Um, and they're designed to radiate into the environment like that. Uh, Diane asks, what is the range of the grid extenders and can they be buried? What is the minimum number of grid extenders needed? Uh, and he wrote God extenders. I don't know if that was a typo or not. Um, so the grid extenders, which we will be releasing here in a few days, these guys, um, pretty blown away by them. Um, I put a lot of work into these for two weeks. I just about frizzle fried myself. Um, putting all the work into these guys, but this guy here, which we cleared up, no worries. Um, this guy here is the same grid point as this guy is the same grid point as this, as our eight foot chambers, as the sits pyramid and the mini. 
So all of the ascension pyramids are holding the exact same field. This little guy is holding the exact same local field as the $2,000 eight foot ascension pyramid. Not to say that you can't crawl inside of this and that the field within the ascension pyramid, the larger ones and the meditation one is a lot more intense. You know, if you're able to be within inside the pyramid, but outside the field that they create, this is the same as all the ascension pyramids. And the reason that can be is because these guys are connected to that ascension pyramid grid. Now the ascension grid, which is what we called it. Um, it's pretty phenomenal. We're still finding out what all this thing is doing as it is shifting and changing still right now. But basically you have one of these cool little orgone pieces in this, and they're going to vary. We're still working on precisely the design with the same mixture of crystals is going to be in here and the same energetics will be here. But these little guys, um, you can bury them. I mean, this is Echopoxy. It's a plant-based resin. Um, and of course, you know, it's plastic. It will take a long time to decay away. Um, so you can bury these, yes. Now, this guy will create that etheric pyramid about the size of a home. So you can totally bury these next to cell phone towers and it is going to mm, hijack a cell phone tower and bring through those beneficial fields of consciousness and light. The grid that these create now, so um, I'll have on the website underneath of the um, quantum grid points, as we call them, that's written in there. So the, the quantum grid, um, we'll, I'll have on the internet, and I already have on Google Maps, I have all these points, like 40 points of different pyramids that we have established already. And then I've also drawn lines in between them. And so each line creates this wall. So right now we have two pyramids right here. It creates this wall of light, of this fiery golden light. Um, just like many of the, the grids, the, the earth grids that you see out there, like the Hartman grid line, um, all of those, they are like basically a wall of geomagnetic energy. And those grid lines are all over the planet. Now, these grid lines, they are also like that wall and they're oh, just a few inches thick. But basically with these, you have these two right here and then you, I'm gonna bring them up on either side of the camera and then that wall of energy just extends right through there. So if you wanna grid something, you can um, basically map out where that line is gonna go and you can actually grid different cell phone towers. Um, you, can grid, you can grid other grids that are out there. So like most of your, your older cities, they will have the, the churches, the government buildings all in straight lines. So you can go on either side of those on the town and place one of these there and one of those there. And that's going to be going right through all of those. Um, so gridding is an amazing thing, you guys. And then I'm super excited about this pyramid grid. Um, so let's see. You, we'll definitely be taking more questions on that one, I'm sure. Um, Christopher asks, are there any new cool meditations or variations of meditation you can share with us at the end? And I've been thinking about that too, Christopher, and I'm really not sure. Um, you know, we did the quantum heart two weeks ago, and that is one that, um, that's the most amazing thing that I have right now. Um, Bill asks, if one places a tensor ring on the ground for a given time, Will the light column remain when the ring is removed? So when you create a column of light, and, and if you use a tensor ring, and you place that on the ground, and basically you're using your intention to create the column of light. It's not the ring that would leave the, once you take the ring off, there would no longer be a column of light that is with the ring. But if you have the intention of creating a column of light, when you set the ring there, it'll totally create a column of light. You can take the ring off and that column of light will stay for eight days 
and then it dissipates unless you put your attention back onto that column of light again. And so those basic columns of light like that that are created through your intention and attention dissipate. And that's why when we created the Global Love and Gratitude Grid in 2012, it was all about connecting columns of light to be able to hold them there. Otherwise, a column of light will dissipate in eight days unless it is, it is either one, connected to a larger grid network, or two, it is held there with another consciousness holding its attention onto there. So when we use the golden fire and light wands and when we create those columns of light, we are using the golden fire from the sacred heart, which is part of our consciousness. So it is us that is holding this particular column of light there indefinitely if needed. It does not dissipate within eight days. That's the same with the wings of talk. When we use these to create the columns of light, those columns of light will stay there indefinitely if needed because somebody like you and talk and others, master beings, have their awareness onto that column of light and will keep it held there so it will not dissipate. So again, just sitting a ring on the ground, intending a column of light will be there. That column of light will stay for eight days. You need to be able to actually use that golden fire and light um, by, by imagining and visualizing using that golden fire um, to leave that column there. And, you know, I know creating columns of light and is can be a little woo woo for some people I tell you this is really a tangible thing to do um and just practice it because like we were talking at the beginning of the webinar when we do these different energy works that they become easy simple and a part of what we do so now then i can just put my attention out there and create a column of light because i've created thousands of columns of light across this world and so it just becomes simple easy second nature um and then let's see Sina asked do you think that straight line cubit tools have a much more intense energy than tensor rings or vice versa um you know with like the the straight line cubits that are in the wands they do concentrate their energy when you're using your light your intention they concentrate the energy more in a pinpoint. So that is a pretty intense little point of light. Now, if these were just sitting there innately, they'd only have this little caterpillar fuzzy looking field around them. It'd be a small field. Um, so the straight line cubit measures, they are a lot different than the tensor rings are. And one thing, and I've been posting, there's some Facebook pages out there for people who you know, build, build tools. Um, there's tensor ring Facebook pages. And what I keep reiterating is that a straight line cubit measure is great, but unless you have an etheric template connected to it to ensure that it is beneficial, straight line cubit measures can be used by any consciousness that looks at it. It is just simply an anchor point. But as soon as you anchor in the etheric template, then it is untouchable. Um, so yeah, if you just go around cutting a bunch of straight line cubit measures, um, you know, they, they need to be connected to something the yeah, three template or else uh, they can be used for non-beneficial purposes actually. Um, Christopher, what is the difference between the harmonic creation field of the trio sets versus the wings of talk harmonic field? Will the wings of talk bring stuff to surface in the same way? So the harmonic creation field trio, which is in the gateway pendants and the water rings and everything, that trio of frequencies is yes within here. We have the regeneration, we have the golden fire, and we have the harmony all within here because the golden fire and the harmony are in straight line cubit measures and the regeneration is in the ring on the outside. So this does contain that harmonic creation field trio. And we put the harmonic creation field trio in here, but not in the physical. This is what I'm super excited about, is instead of putting three rings in here to create the harmonic creation field trio, 
we anchored those in so you can feel the harmonic creation field trio in here but the rings aren't here we anchored it into the geometry and the rest of the tools that make this yeah, sidetrack there sorry <laughs> so what is the so does this um wings of talk still bring things to the surface to be cleared as the gateway pendant does it does um the harmonic creation field trio is one that we've done that meditation with to where it does bring up all of the stuff because as it's bringing in your light it is clearing all of the the crap the programs the beliefs the the emotion stuff that comes up it comes up into our conscious awareness but one thing about using the infinite light pendant versus this this is doing the clearing work that this makes us do but this one makes us do it on more of a conscious level we have to be conscious and aware when we're using the harmonic creation field trio for the releasing of crap where the wings of talk and the infinite light pendant are still doing the release stuff but we don't have to do as much work we don't have to have as much of that conscious awareness and going through the breathing and letting it go um, as with the create creation field trio and Patricia I have a few of your lovely products and I really feel them which is the best copper product to use to dispel negative energies from an apartment building that my company owns so many negative things happen there so for anything the environmental wise the golden fire generator is the easiest of all the things for doing the environmental clearing this is a set it and forget it tool um, golden fire generator any size the other things that you can do are the wings of talk but it is one that you would work with more like the golden light wand the wand anchoring columns of light into that space or the wings of talk which if i was anchoring a column of light into a space where you're working with people and dense consciousness i would go with the wings of talk versus creating the columns of light with the golden light wand when you create it with the golden light wand it is a high vibration space great for clearing emfs working with water things like that but to me when you are working with dense consciousness and you're anchoring light the wings of talk is the way to go because it assists consciousness into raising um, so as far as working within that apartment that is it just depends on where you feel like going with doing the energy work simple set it forget it is the golden fire generator the wings of talk is a phenomenal tool to use the new pyramid grids are also phenomenal um, you know the pyramid grid I'm seeing isn't going to quite cover that entire apartment building um, for some reason so it's almost like you would put one of these and then grid it with these guys um, you know outside of it but again wings of talk is what I would suggest mostly for for doing that work there if you feel like doing the energy work otherwise yep the golden fire generator hey Malit recently have a feeling been feeling a lot of tingling in my crown when I go into the heart space I also feel a tangle and that sensation will stay with me for a while I am unsure if I feel anything while connecting to Gaia I often go outside barefoot to connect any tips um yeah it just expanding um and maybe that's what we'll do is we'll, for our meditation here at the end is we'll just go in and we'll expand ourselves we'll connect and expand so a lot of times um you know and it depends on the tingling the tingling is you know it's different for everybody and it's different at different times so for me when i used to feel the tingling it was because it was it was opening up now then for me if i'm going to twist wire and i feel a tingling it is usually because i'm not able to get past there it's it's like it's you know it's like something um blocking and that's where my tingling comes in anymore when i feel it and so 
when you so if you're not feeling the grounding that's it too is that we become so immersed within our light within ourselves and then we expand that and grow that and um, maybe even we'll do the quantum heart today too to where we expand and grow that to where that clears blockages so that you can feel that grounding connection and you do move beyond any of those limitations so yeah thank you malit that was inspiration for for doing the meditation here um samson hey there do you see an angelic wand or angelic tensor tool coming through sometime in the future hmm that's a thought so the angelic race as i see it are a race of beings just like dragons um you know and then again i see a lot of people who have an incarnation as an angelic for me very much um for the past couple of years and it hasn't been so here in the past few months but for the past couple of years in 20 2018 2019 2017 um i very much resonated with um, an aspect of me that is a master angel of the angelic race and worked very much with the angelics like Michael, Raphael, all those guys um, for a number of years. And, you know, the, so yeah, the angelic race, the, the angels are pretty phenomenal. Um, and to create an angelic wand that that's the thought samson um yeah thank you for bringing that up because as much as we work with the the angelics um that's interesting that they've never really been a part of the, of the tools so uh sammy asked how you measure the frequency of the ring like for example a ring with 144 megahertz what equipment is needed to measure and how so when when Slim had the 144 megahertz ring, uh, they measured that with an oscilloscope. An oscilloscope basically, and, and I bought some 1950s ones thinking I could measure the frequency of rings, but no, the oscilloscope has to be tuned into within a certain band with the frequency is all it will read. So these oscilloscopes it would basically drop the sensor right down inside of the tensor ring and then that oscilloscope would measure the frequency. That's how Slim did it. And then when he worked with Hans Becker, Hans Becker did it through mathematical equations to create the 177 megahertz ring. Um, then when we created the 188 megahertz and the 333 and the 764, those ones were all done through dowsing. There was actually a master dowser who gave me those measurements. We sat on the phone for hours and we worked at finding the specific measurement and then we would find, you know, through the dowsing process to of the specific frequency. Um, and then, you know, and of course I, I'm always skeptical minded. So I always have things double check like that. Uh, it's just the old science background in me and, and some of that distrust of, of everything's everybody's perceptions. And so, um, you know had other people check it including my sister and especially my sister and so we found that we could you can check on uh, the older frequency of tools that have a static standard frequency like the 144 you can also check that through dowsing um, but otherwise scientific equipment it's an oscilloscope anymore our rings do not contain a single static frequency as soon as we started making the galactic rings and then the harmony, the golden fire and all of those, there are so there, there are tensor field that within that band with the field is so many frequencies. And it is like a giant toolbox of frequencies that your being, your higher consciousness pulls through the frequencies that you need at any given moment. So right now the golden fire ring is going to produce multiple layers of frequencies and they're going to shift and change by what you need in any moment and who's holding on to it. So you cannot measure the static frequency in any of the newer tools. Um, and Bill, is it common for people to have physical effects like fatigue as a result of activations? 
you know, when you when you do receive activations, yeah, there's a lot of physical effects that can occur. Um, you know, and fatigue it can be one of them. Uh, one of one of the reasons that you can have fatigue is that you're you're trying to be reset. You know, you have to take that quiet time, rest, relax, reset your system. Um, the activation work that we do, um, well, just activation work in general, it is resetting your system. It's rewiring. It's reworking how your cells function. I mean, all the regeneration rings um, and such, they are working on a physical cellular level. And so, yeah, fatigue can occur for sure. Um, just be easy with yourself. Um, the fatigue is there for a reason. Linda, do grounding or earthing tools work with the tensor tools? I sleep on a grounding pad wearing my silver light pendant. Does it make a difference? Oh, yeah, certainly. Um, you know, all the grounding that our tools are doing for people are basically that etheric grounding, the, the etheric energetic grounding of the, our light into the light of the earth. That is the grounding that takes place. But yeah, there's nothing like taking our physicalness and sticking our toes in the dirt or grounding ourselves through, you know, like your grounding mat. Um, you know, the, they do work together very well. So yes, please, please do both the styles of grounding, that energetically and that in the physical electromagnetically. Um, what are the best tensor rings to use with orgone? You know, I would suggest the golden fire rings to use with orgone um, because they, they work really well with crystals. Um, they are going to make sure that any of the orgone that is created is always beneficial and supercharged. So gold and fire always is what I recommend with the orgone energy. Um, and then Renard asks, which one of your tools resonates with the pineal the most? I know the empowerment measure works with it, but not sure which tools hold that measure. So yeah, the, the empowerment qubit, um, as Slim's widow called it, or, or the 188 as we called it, that was the one at the time that was working the best with the pineal. Um, and then we took that 188 megahertz ring and we put it into the harmony rings. And then we also put that into the golden fire rings. And, and again, um, the golden fire would be the one that I would suggest to use for working with the pineal. Now, when I wrote um, the Harmony Handbook and Multidimensional Primer, and then when I've done some of the videos like on the pineal activation, we were always using the Harmony Ring because that's the one that we had at the time was the Harmony Ring. Um, that's a fun one too. Let's do the pineal activation, you guys. Also here at the end. So here in about 10 minutes, we'll do um, the, the pineal activation that, that we've taught before with using the rings. Um, because you basically don't need or have a ring. You just need to connect to the etheric aspect of it. So that's what we'll do is we'll, we'll do a pineal activation um, using a ring. But you don't need a physical one. But if you do have a physical ring laying around, grab it. Any size, it'll sit on top of your head. And we'll do that activation here in a moment. Um, Bill, please compare a tower buster with the orgone pyramid as far as affecting a microwave tower. So, yes, this could be considered an orgone or organite pyramid. I'll use the registered trademark name organite as much as possible. So, organite is basically it produces ions it produces frequencies it's using the crystal structure it's using the layering structure um orgone is a phenomenal thing but i don't trust a piece of orgone to transform cell phone towers i feel that when people are using organite at cell phone towers that it is them that is doing the transformation, that that piece of orgone becomes simply a tool of attention for their intention. Um, 
these guys are so different. These guys are connected to an etheric template. They are connected to the ascension grid that we've created with all of the larger ascension pyramids, these pyramids. These are all the ones that are making it possible for this little piece of crystal plastic to hold that and to transform that cell phone tower because it is not this little piece in the physical that is doing the work for the cell phone tower. And that's the thing with Organite is that it is a physical and it has a bandwidth, which is just within the bandwidth in the power of these crystals of the multi-layer of the ions of all that. It is not the bigger thing. So this creates a giant etheric pyramid of that field of neutrality of quantum harmony it is because this is simply a space holder so consider this as like a tensor ring or one of the tools that we make that uh, this is simply the physical space holder for the larger energetic piece which is doing the work for that cell phone tower um quite a concept it really is bill uh, Christopher, my illuminated heart is so awesome. <laughs> Great. Because, yeah, we don't make the illuminated hearts anymore. We, we're making the golden fire ones. Um, it was so cool feeling it instantly clear my field when I put it on, much stronger than the ordinary ring. I would love it if you guys started selling these regularly again. Can you talk a little bit about its function compared to the other infinities? E yeah, we might have to start making the illuminated hearts again. Um, the reason that we stopped making the illuminated hearts, we actually make them for the activators. That's the illuminated heart there. That's the only time we're using them right now, currently. The reason for that is, is because we were using the golden fire infinities as zipper pulls for kids because the golden fire was just better for the purpose of sending kids to school with a little zipper pull on it, which is basically that size of an infinity with a little clasp on it, the zipper pulls because the golden fire was great for kids at school because of working with dense consciousness, electromagnetics, all the funky frequencies in school, um, other thought forms. That was what the golden fire was great for. And so we kept getting the golden fire infinities, and this infinity mixed up because they're only a few millimeters in difference in physical length. Um, so the illuminated heart was the regeneration infinity. And yes, Christopher, that is a phenomenal one, the regeneration infinity. So yeah, we might have to bring it back. Um, let's see. So I think that's all the questions we got up here so far, and that might be all the questions we're going to do. I'm going to jump over here to the, the message side. Um, let's see. And Gail asks, um, what is the difference between the $2,200 and the $1,200 pyramids, including differences in the instruments and overall effects? So the eight-foot ascension pyramid actually comes with the larger... Well, uh, that's not the size. The larger Gaia sphere versus the smaller pyramid that comes with the smaller Gaia sphere. And then the smaller pyramids come with the harmonic creation field trio in the water ring size, where the giant pyramid comes with our heavier gauge practitioner rings. Um, and that's really the biggest difference. Um, one of the other big differences, I guess, with the, the large eight foot ascension pyramid is just the, the brackets that we've had to machine up top that hold the torus in the top. That was another part of the cost on, on the cost difference there. But really for the power and potency of everything, the, the sits pyramid, the meditation pyramid has the same power and potency within it as does the eight foot pyramid. Um, as far as outside of the pyramid and the, the, the residual effects, well not residual, but the effects that come from being outside of the pyramid, every size is the same. All the way down to this guy, this guy, 
the many, the medium, the large, the giants, they they all have the same effect outside of the pyramid. Um, and the the sits pyramid, the many or the the medium sits pyramid, and the large ascension pyramid have the same on the inside. Um, Let's see, Margaret, in Chinese astrology, there's the symbol of the dragon. Yes. Um, so they're just reading some comments here, um, comments from along the way here that I, I don't keep up on the comment side because I was on the question. Sorry about that, guys. Um, and yes, uh, Teresa, this session is being recorded. It will be put up onto YouTube and also under twistedsage.com resources. There's 50 questions Friday. It'll also be put there. Um, let's see. And awesome. I tell you what, guys, let's do a couple of quick meditations here and we will. Um, yeah, we'll go through a couple of quick meditations here. All right. Um, one more question here. Brian, is the practitioners the best to clear the aura? Hmm. So I really like the practitioner rings for doing work with people, not only for the aligning chakras, clearing cords, clearing the aura, cleaning the aura field, um, the grounding, the connecting, all of that. If I'm doing work with somebody, um, usually I carry a large, uh, I carry a practitioner set usually in my car. So that way, if I'm out and about and um, have a friend that comes up and says, hey, man, can you help me out with this? I'll usually have them stand in the rings and run the ring over them just because it is a shortcut and easy way to do most of the work, get them centered, calmed in the heart, and then we can do the work real quick. So as far as the best to clear the aura, yes, I do like those practitioner rings a lot. Um, if people come here to the studio, I put them in the pyramid, the eight foot Ascension pyramid, you know, the Ascension pyramid that we sell, that is the one that we have people jump into and we do the work here. And even Brenda, when Brenda has her clients, um, right now she's been having her clients come here to, to our original studio, um, you know, that she sees in person locally and She'll have them sit inside of the, the Ascension Pyramid as well. But of course, our Ascension Pyramid has, you know, floor plates and everything else with it. So um, the floor plates are a phenomenal way to clear the aura, the energy fields. This is the mini floor plate, the large floor plate. Um, yeah, if you had unlimited resources, I'd say get a floor plate and set of three rings and that you can basically build your entire um, a modality around that. But anyway, let us step into a couple of meditations here. So first let's, um, let's go back to where Malit was talking about, about uh, the tingling in the head and not being able to feel the grounding. So let's just do the quick Trinity breath that we did here at the beginning and taking in those breaths from the earth into the heart and bringing in that energy from source, soul, creator, God. And I just call it creation energy anymore. Um, call it whatever you want where you're connecting into that higher power, that higher field, because um, everybody's going to connect a little bit differently and in different spaces. The goal truly is to connect into that field of creation. That's where the soul is, um, but any of those higher fields. So the Trinity breath. So it's just closing your eyes, putting your attention onto your physical heart where your light is, breathing in that energy of the earth, that crystal sun of the earth, that consciousness, that loving, healing energy of the earth right up into the heart. Breathing in that energy of creation, of source, soul, creator, God. Mm -hmm. 
Breathe in both those together within the heart. All right. We are all connected within this field, so we're just going to hold space for each other. We'd like to have you visualize your heart as being just lit up. Ignite your heart. Turn every cell of your heart, your heart into a sun. We're going to hold the space for everybody as we are all within this space. We are within these higher fields, the field of neutrality, of quantum harmony. Just stay with the light within your heart and expand that through your body, having every cell of your body ignite, raising the frequency and vibration of your physical being. Now start expanding that light. Expand it up into the crown, outside of your body, opening up that crown and expanding your light down, deep down into the core of the earth. Cool. I see you connecting there, Malit. So yeah, just keep grounding your light into that core of the earth. Expanding your light up into creation. This is infinite light and it begins from within the heart. All right, all you golden, vibrant beings, bring your attention back here and maybe even open your eyes and look around your space and be radiant as you are aware of this space so that you radiate out into everything your awareness is on. Oh, I don't know if you all feel those shifts, but I see so many of you shifting your space just by radiating out. And then stay back in the heart because as you look out there and your awareness lands on things, sometimes it'll pull you out of the heart. So if you need to, just close the eyes again. Come back into your radiance, into your heart. Open them and keep going. And this does not have to be an active or pushing or transforming energy. It is simply just a radiating. Part of having the quantum heart is basically just holding your essence and allowing your essence to flow into everything. Awesome. All right. So since we were going to do the pineal activation, let's do that as well. So bringing yourself back to your body here, back to your awareness. If you have a ring, grab it. If you don't, use this one. Imagine that you have a tensor ring and you place it on top of your head. It could be any size of ring. Just imagine that ring sitting on your head. If you have one in the physical, sit it up there. Now as you're in your heart space, we're using our visualization, our attention, and we're using our intention to visualize and intend that those rings drop down into the physical brain, drop down to around the pineal, that little 
tiny nub, that little gland that sits right in the middle of the brain. That ring drops down right around the pineal gland. You can close your eyes and just visualize that if you need to take those breaths into the heart. And it's not trying, so don't try too hard. It's just an allowing. We have our intention there. If you can visualize it, that's fantastic. If you can't, just be, just let it happen. Awesome. Now, if you do have a physical ring, you can take those off the top of the head now. And see if you can feel that around the pineal. Oh, thank you guys for playing. I know the meditation we did just a second ago was pretty phenomenal. You guys shifted a lot of things in your world. And that's truly what we want to do is we want to do that kind of work and make it a part of who we are and what we do. So thank you guys for sharing your light, sending it out, and we'll see you next week.